Alright, uh, physics question one. So we are given a 450kg car. Alright, so it's used in drag, <coughs> drag racing. So it experienced a resistive force of 530 Newton. Okay, and they said that the car took 15 seconds to travel to the end of a 400 meter road. Okay, so how do we find the power delivered by the car engine? Okay, so first of all, uh, before we do anything, right? Okay, let's calculate what is the uh, acceleration first. Okay, so we know that the car accelerate uniformly. Okay, so our so called area under the graph is four hundred. Okay, so I want to know what is the final speed by the car. Okay, so this one we will use the concept of our kinematics, right? Okay, so half, okay, so let's just say I put this as V, final velocity as V, okay, half times V times your 15, right, will give me 400, okay, so bas basically the area under the graph is your uh, distance or displacement, okay, so if you calculate, you should get 400, okay, you should get about uh, 53, 1, meter per second all right so but i'm uh, interested in calculating the acceleration right so acceleration equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the time taken okay so since initial velocity is zero right and we know that final velocity is about 53 one th meter one third meter per second and the time taken is about 15 second okay so your acceleration is about uh okay about three five nine okay i just put in fraction form first right meter the second square all right so i have my acceleration okay if i have my acceleration uh, and i have the mass of the car i can find something called the resultant force okay so this one is back to our chapter three forces right okay so uh f equal to m a Okay, uh, so just remember this F. Uh, this F is not those like a forward force or whatever force. It's what we call the resultant force. Okay, so this is resultant. Okay, resultant uh, force. Okay, alright. So, okay, so now my mass of the car is about 450. Okay, and the acceleration is 359. Okay, so the resultant force will be about... Okay, so the resultant force of the car is about 1,600 Newton. Okay, so let's go back to the, the diagram that I've drawn. Alright, so you can see uh, for the diagram here, there's a car, right? Okay, okay, so there's a green force of 530 Newton. This one uh, is your uh, resistive forces. Okay, something like your frictional force or your air resistance, right? So since uh, there's a resultant force of about 1,600, right? Okay, so resultant force is this way. Okay, 1,600 Newton. Okay, so uh, resultant force is the net force, right? Okay, so the purple minus away the uh, green color force must give me my 1,600 Newton. Alright, so basically your forward force uh, or your engine force uh, will be about 1600 plus your 530 okay so this one is about 2130 newton okay so this 2130 newton is your engine okay force all right because you are moving you are accelerating forward right? okay the engine must provide the force for it to accelerate forward okay so now we know that a hey, our engine force uh, is about 2130 newton okay so now i can i know the engine force now okay and they tell me to find the power of the car engine by the end of 400 root okay so this one uh, clearly states uh, states that we need to find the so called instantaneous instantaneous okay so at that particular point uh, I can find my power okay so remember power is equal to the rate of work done right or or i can say f uh f times d lah, okay divide by time 
okay so if you uh if you just treat the d divided by t uh, as one entity uh, you will get f uh, distance i mean displacement divided by time will give you velocity right okay so i force i need my velocity okay so i know that the velocity at the end of my 400 meter uh, raise uh, is about uh, 553 one third okay and the engine force that I've calculated is 2,130 2, Newton. Okay, so you just uh, sub inside 2130, then this is 5313. Okay, so what you'll get is about, let's see here, uh, 3, sorry. So you'll get about a power of 113600 watts. Okay, so the SI unit for power is watts. Alright, or you can maybe put a 113, uh, maybe 114 kilowatts also can. Okay, yeah. Alright, so uh, yeah, so this is for question A. Okay, question B, uh, they tell us to find the average power by my car engine. Okay, so the average power uh, basically for A and B there's a bit of difference all right so A is what we call the instantaneous power uh, okay for average power you simply just use power okay is equal to uh, force work done right force times distance divided by the total time taken all right so you can uh, you can see uh, that my total distance traveled by the car is about 400 okay 400 uh. So this is, okay, maybe I just use this. Okay, so this is 400. Okay, and the force by the, the engine force, right, I've calculated is about 2130. Okay, 2130. Okay, and the total time taken that to travel the entire journey is 15 seconds. Okay, yeah. So you'll get a, definitely you'll get a difference. Uh, you'll get a different result as compared to your A. Okay. So you get five six eight zero zero watts. All right. Yeah. So this is your average power. Okay. So you can see there's a. I mean, of course, there's a difference, right? Uh, one one three six zero zero, and five six eight zero zero watts. Okay. Yeah. So how come there's a difference? Okay. We can uh, for your average power. Uh, I'm basically using the average velocity okay uh, average velocity to calculate okay so yeah so that's for uh, your question one